Hello again. Sorry about that. I accidentally hit stop on the recording. Um, I was mentioning if we were to have this magic wand where we could just sort of raise the temperature in the core and just say like, all right, sun's core, you're going to go up another million Kelvin. What that would do is that would increase the fusion rate. And then what would happen is the core would expand outwards. But as the core expands outwards, the temperature drops. And the fusion rate returns to normal. So we have this built-in mechanism for stabilization. That's what we think really defines a star, is that the hydrostatic equilibrium is a very stable equilibrium. So it is a sustained fusion reaction that takes place for billions of years because it is self-regulating. When it's no longer self-regulating, we get into the variable and pulsating stage. Hydrogen fusion is switching to helium fusion. What happens then? Helium is fused into carbon. That that releases a lot more energy, and so you get to the red giant stage. Then that core, once you build up enough carbon, if the core is 1.44 solar masses or less, the Chandrasekhar limit, fusion stops, no more energy is generated. The core is hot, so it forces the outer layers off into space through all the ultraviolet radiation. That's the planetary nebula part. And eventually it all dissipates, and what is left is a white dwarf, and that white dwarf will cool and become a yellow dwarf or not yellow dwarf like our sun but the surface temperature is going to cool so much that it goes through all the thermal uh, spectrum colors and eventually just become a very cool chunk of carbon and oxygen in this degenerate state so our modern view of stellar evolution is a pre-main sequence star. It's a collapsing cloud. You got lots of dust. There are examples of those. We call them herbig harrow objects after people who've studied these things, oftentimes with infrared telescopes. Titari type stars. Again, they're always named for the first star in a constellation where we observe this. Then there's the main sequence. Hydrogen goes to helium post-main sequence, pulsation for some stars, and then helium fusion. And then for stars like our sun, slightly bigger and slightly smaller, you end as a white dwarf. Next class, we will cover what are the other options for stars that, that are bigger, significantly bigger than our sun. I encourage you to look at the these links right here. Um, the Astronomy Magazine article, View the Beauty of Stellar Death, Subramanian Chandrasekhar short autobiography on the Nobel Prize site. He won the Nobel Prize in 1983 for work that he did in 1929 that gave us the 1.44 solar mass limit for a white dwarf. Um, the helix, this, this explanation on Astronomy Picture of the Day is particularly good. So the HR diagram, we can infer so much from this. Again, the horizontal axis is either surface temperature or spectral type. Those are synonymous. Uh, the vertical axis luminosity, again, in solar units. So one solar luminosity and going down to, sorry for the non-straightness of what I intended to be straight lines, going down to a G-type star. This is our, our sun's place on this personality diagram for stars. Remember the ISO radius lines, the main sequence covers stars that are red dwarfs, which are maybe a hundredth the size, or not sorry, a hundredth, maybe a tenth the size of the sun, all the way up to stars that are maybe 10 times or a little more the size of our sun. The super giants and the giants up here, these are the stars that are no longer fusing hydrogen into helium. The white dwarfs down here, uh, Sirius B actually has, it's the companion to Sirius A, so the star Sirius, the brightest star in, for the Northern Hemisphere, is, is, a, is a binary star. Sirius A is a white main sequence star right here, but Sirius B is actually a white dwarf, and you need a telescope to see that white dwarf. These 
this diagram lists a bunch of example stars uh, for different places on the main sequence. One thing we knew uh, from the HR Diagram Lab is that masses of stars can be inferred from the main sequence. So the Sun, of course, is one solar mass. But as we go up the main sequence, this is about 1.5 solar masses for Procyon. Uh, Sirius maybe is one and a half to two solar masses, according to this diagram. You got 10 solar masses for stuff up here. And so these, these stars, um, as you go up the main sequence, since they're more massive, they will fuse their hydrogen faster because there's more gravity pulling in. And that raises the temperature of the cores and raises their surface temperatures. So that's why they appear blue. Another thing that we can then infer is the lifetime of the, the hotter stars will be, will be shorter. And that's because they will use their hydrogen fuel much faster than stars down at the lower end of the HR diagram. So you can infer the size of a star, the mass of a star, the lifetime of a star, all by its placement on this diagram. And since you can also infer the lifetime and the mass, you can infer what's going to happen to that star when all the fusion stops. Where is it going to go? So stars that will become white dwarfs. This is your cutoff. All of those stars may be down to about here. All these will end up right here as a white dwarf. We think these stars may just continue to burn or fuse for a very long time longer than the universe is old right now um, but we need to study them more because what they can do is they can actually mix around their hydrogen throughout the whole star in a way that our sun cannot these stars have a different fate than our sun and we will learn about that next class